Stage two cleared. It does. You might also be making things like over, like unnecessarily overcomplicated if you're gonna, you know, bounce between a bunch of different game engines though. For different sections is a big concern. Down we go. Down this away we go. Ow, my face. Okay, well, I guess we're not doing that then. <laughs> I guess that ain't happening. So, do that then. Um, let's grab the this, how about? That's what we can grab. Grab the new mecha thing. This is the way we can do. Alright. Yeah, hopefully it doesn't overcomplicate things too much there for you. Oh crap, I was just kind of holding right. Food, maybe? Imagine though. I don't need stars, I need food. I'm a hungry Kerbo. Screw it, let's switch it up to sand. For fun. This is what we can do. Move it about. Um they're different game engines. They uh the code is completely different. You can't uh there's no easy way that you can exactly just import it and uh have it work there. If you're using a lot of things like something like C sharp code or something like that, you can always slap something like that into Unity, but uh you know, it might be easier said than done because they're completely different engines, you know is the case. It might be a little bit tricky. Wow. Not quite as easy as just put it all into one folder and uh, and the whole thing operates like that. Okay. This way we go. Through here. And then through this way we have no foods. I don't know how I get that but I don't need it. I don't need it I guess. I don't need it. I definitely don't need it. Oh, which one does it give me? Oh! Oh. Do I press B? Th that doesn't even restore health. I thought they were supposed to restore health. Well, there's some health at least. This is gonna fall. I thought I could make it, but then I changed my mind and I turned around and I got hit. Look how crazy this background is. Like, my goodness. That is one super crazy background there. <laughs> yeah, seems a... Seems like a rather complicated step, though. You might be able to have, like, save data transfer where it just reads it in a certain way. Something that I proposed to you before. Where it's just to, like, have, like, a save data file that it'll be able to read and... Know where you're at and stuff. Oh! You know, I saw the ground moving there, and I thought that this was something like, you know, I'm moving here, and there's the ground going by, and I'm advancing towards the end. I'm realizing now that I'm staying still, and it's the ground that's moving, not me moving while the ground's staying still. I'm now realizing. Yeah, sure, I'll yoink that. Took me a second there to, uh, come to that realization. Okay. Kapew. That was close. That was really close. Pew pew. Whoa. Okay. Yeah, bring out the uh, the paradox shelmets. Stuff. Ouch. Very rude. Well, crap. I don't even have my supercharged up thing. I don't even have it. Darn you. Pew pew. Okay, I'm just gonna pew pew that. Wah. This away we go. If that's the question there, you should check out some of Sakurai's videos on uh, on game design there. Fun fact, in the uh, gameplay section of, uh, no wait, was it the open world section? They're both, they both talk about gameplay. There's a chapter on the open world and a chapter on everything else about the gameplay in the Scarlet Violet essay. One of those one of those ones. I actually talk about Sakurai's Game Essence. Game Essence is essentially the balance of, like, risk and reward. Like, what's the, uh, what's the nice feeling there of, uh, as you're playing, of balancing risk and reward? Which I guess might just be, like, uh, typical RPG kind of stuff. Though it can also, you know, the definition can be a little bit broad. You can, you know, expand it out to mean a wider range of things. But the way that Sakurai defines it is the fun of managing risk and reward. 
is the uh, is the case. And it's something that I... Yeah, the push and pull. It's another way to phrase it. Something that I draw attention to in the Scarlet and Violet essay because I say that this game doesn't really have much in the way of risk and reward. Like, there's not really much point in doing things early. Like, you go, you beat... Let's say you beat Grusha, the eighth gym leader, as your first gym leader. Then congratulations. Pokemon of up to level 25 will now obey you. You know? Like, there's no point in doing it early, which makes you question why the heck it's an open world game, even. When it comes to that video game... What a weird video game Scarlet and Violet is. I do have to say here. Boop a bop, do that. So... <laughs> in the case of the Scarlet and Violet essay, I say that Scarlet and Violet really doesn't have much at all in the way of game essence. There's basically no risk and reward that you balance. It is the worst example of an open world game. It is the case. Um, freedom, free will, self-determination, a bunch of other synonyms to that, if that's what you mean. Yeah, so it's more of push and pull, risk and reward, stuff like that. Essentially. As well it is. The fun factor that comes from managing risks and rewards. Whoa! I was not expecting you to come out there. Okay, get out of here, dude. No, please. Climb up the weirdest looking ladder I've ever seen. Oh. I wasn't sure exactly what that would be there. Well, now I know. Now I know for sure what that is. Yeah, I'm not getting that. Um, they're going to program RPGs bigger battle script into Unity or Unreal Engine? I would have no idea. I mean, RPG Maker just uses a, uh, version of C, I believe, right? I don't know, it's been a good while since I've used it. So I don't quite recall. It has been a while. Well, last time I was coding things in there, it was C-like, Java-like, that kind of system-ish. The last time I was using it. Bam! Sweet. I'm not getting those stars, I guess. Whoa. So we're just gonna go around here one-shotting bosses, I guess. That's what we're doing here. Smack. Hey, food. I can use that. But yeah. Well, wait. Can I, uh... Can I do this? Um, I'm not quite sure that items are a good example from Mario Kart. Because if you're balancing risk and reward with items, what would that be? That I should try to... Look, I can't words today. Would that then be, hmm, should I actually try to be in, you know, further back place so that I get better items that'll help me a little bit more out later? No, you typically want to be sticking around with, like, first place. Maybe a... Whoa, was that a... I don't know what that is, actually. Um... I guess that could be the case of, like, if I want to stay in first if a blue shell is coming after me and second place is really close, do I want to slow down so that second place eats it instead of me? Would be the case. A better example of game essence would be drifting, where it's, like, it's a lot easier to go off course and lose control when you're drifting. Like, it's a little bit of a more difficult technique to do. But if you successfully pull it off, you get a speed boost. Like, Mario Kart plays into that by rewarding you for the riskier behavior of drifting by rewarding you with a speed boost. And that's something that Sakurai tried to play into with Kirby Air Ride, with like the uh, pull back kind of drifting system there to make it really feel like you're uh, kind of working at it and then you like zoom off a second later is the case. Is what a good example of that there. Like game events, no, the risk and reward. Like where does your player take risks to gain greater reward? and have fun doing so, is what it is. All right, yeah, just delete all these guys. Go this away. But yeah, and drifting is the actual example that I use in the uh, Scarlet and Violet essay, is the case where it's like you're incurring greater risk by doing this, but if you do pull it off, you get greater reward. And in doing so, have fun, you know? is the way that it goes, as opposed to just going straight and not doing any drifting at all. Okay. Yeah, all these bosses that we just annihilate. Yeah, absolutely love to see it. It is pretty satisfying. And when I don't get crushed like I did that one time there. Okay. <laughs> I saw this volcano in half to show you the power of flex tape. Well, uh... Do I give it a go here? Do I just hop on in? In that a case? 
Okay, well. Nom. I'm gonna head on through this way. Oh, man. Yeah, so I'm gonna need to shoot those forward to uh, be able to clear the way. Come on! Come on, Kerbo! But yeah, once you figure out how to implement all this stuff in the game, plan to add super secret bosses to unlock things later in the game that unlocks more secrets to the story. Wow. And maybe you can try doing them early for like higher risk, but better rewards early on, mayhap. I mean, it doesn't necessarily need to be the case, but that was the, uh... oh, come on, come on. It's the fun of, it's the fun of balancing risk and rewards is the, uh, is the main definition. Gosh, dang it. How can your player take risks to, well, to potentially get rewards? Is the case because if you never have to take risks in a game then it's not really fun like i have to take risks here about like my timing for example like here you could argue this is game essence where it's like man do i go for it do i just try to get it in this cycle or do i wait but risk that wall coming towards me a little bit uh a little bit faster or a little bit sooner you know do i risk getting hit by the flames here or the wall like what feels like the safer play what risks do I take here? By getting through to the end? Like that time I committed, for example. Like stuff like that is fun. The fact that you have to take risks instead of just going through a game where you never have to worry about like a single risk ever. So in what ways does your player need to take risks, get rewards, and have fun by doing so is essentially what it means. This is the way we go. You wink, I will take that. Whoa. Well, like, I could take the... Okay, I swear that this is supposed to uh, heal me up, right? Do I have to... Is there something that I'm missing here? Shake the controller. Oh, the bubble gets bigger. I'm so confused, man. Like, that was taking a risk of going for the random thing. I'll just go for the water instead. There's a stuff there. But yeah, gotcha, gotcha then. Well, I do hope that development keeps on a... Start at Forgotten Land. Oh, well, what the heck is the point of the sleep here then? I wonder. <laughs> Krakatoa! Except with water instead of fire. Well, uh. Just go ahead and do that. No, what I mean is balancing risk and reward, but it's not, it's not too important here. Boobity bop. All those quested chests to get better equipment have a much easier chance. Yeah, not quite what's what's meant there, but I'm sure like I can I can always send the uh, video in question later if you're curious about that. Either that video or something that I end up talking about during the Scarlet and Violet video essay as well, anyway, is also the case. We wow, so fun. All right, this way we go. But with that man. The good news is that the majority of the chapter is super easy until the end of the chapter there's a boss fight that's essential to the story and really challenging. But I guess that they're they're being challenged, but uh what I mean more so is like in what ways can you take risk? Is what I uh is what I more so meant. This is the way we why are there those four random guys there? Strange whale. Whale. Boobity bop. Not challenge, but risk. Is the case. Is what it more so entails. And what ways does the player take risks? Alright, well, another stage cleared here. Oh. Kerblamo. Boss stage four. Okay. 60 energy spheres and stuff like that. I suppose there's that, yeah. I'd say that counts. But, you know, that it typically means like more so like while you're actively playing the game rather than like whether or not you do side content is what it usually means. Like, again, the most key example in something like Mario Kart was drifting while I was playing Kirby there. You know, I have a moving wall slowly coming towards me that'll spell my doom if it hits me. And there's these flaming orbs that are coming at me right now. So, do I wait out this flaming orb that's coming down and risk the wall hitting me sooner? Or do I try to, uh, you know, make it through in this cycle? 
but I risk eating some damage from like the flaming orb. Like what way do I, uh, like having to make snap decisions like that rather than uh, like that there is more so of long-term kind of decisions of uh, you know, generally how you're playing the overall game. Game essence is more of snap decisions in the moment while you're actively playing like in the moment, the risks that you have to take then and there is what it's more so like. But uh, what's happening here? This is giving me like some Metroid vibes for the music there. Some lighter Metroid music is what it almost feels like. You know, should I have left my uh, song a little bit longer? Yeah, you look like you came from a freemium app about hatching dragons. I, I know that I've seen some dragon app game, you know, showcased on various content creators videos before that had gotten sponsored. I don't remember what it's called though. But I know that it's a thing or bob that I've seen ads of before from various creators and stuff. <laughs> it's the they them dragon. <laughs> My goodness gracious. It might be that. Dragon City might be that. Oh! Oh crap. More sand. I can even sand castle. You want the sand castle? All right, well. Oh. So that's how it is, huh? Well, if you're gonna keep on being in the air like that. Well, more sand. <laughs> it all makes sense now. <laughs> Now I get you. Well, there we go. <laughs> we killed the they them dragon. Or just defeated, I guess. Okay. Saving. Can we get the crown? My crown. For I am the king of Five Nights at Kirby's. Bravo, Kirby. You've truly earned your reputation as a hero. Your help defeating Landia was invaluable. You, villain moment? Ah, at long last, it's mine. The source of limitless power, the Master Crown. Obtaining this crown has been my ultimate goal all along. What's with all the weird looks? Fine. Let me explain everything. I fought Landia by myself and lost, so I fled to Planet Popstar. That's when the thought struck me. I could have you defeat Landia for me. A stroke of genius, I know. You even helped me repair my star cutter. I really did appreciate that, by the way. Anyway, <laughs> The time has come for your planet. No, the time has come for the entire universe to bow down to me. And for being such a big help in all of this, your planet gets to go first. Prepare to bow, Popstar. Welcome to your new overlord. Look. Wait, do we each get a dragon? That's why there's four of them. <laughs> so, yeah. I mean, all of us can technically fly. Meta know you especially well, but uh, <laughs> we're playing Tales Symphonia now. 